Karen. Thank you. Um, hi, um, Karen Albertson, as she said, Executive Director of the Historical Society. And our speaker today is Isabel Wise, a retired interior designer who has volunteered the last 10 years with the Hollywood Women's Club. She's also the past president and project manager for phases two and three for the restoration of the, um, the Women's Club, which is a 1927 building located at 504 North 14th Avenue. She will also tell us about the history of the Hollywood Women's Club and the restoration proceedings. Thanks for joining us, Izzy. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be able to share this afternoon with all of you. Um, I'm going to begin by sharing my screen and I'd like to just go through my presentation. I'm going to do a, some brief history of the women's club itself, but the focus is going to be sharing information about the actual restoration that's in process right now. So give me a few minutes. Okay. And what the hell? Oh, all good. Okay. Um, my front sc screen begins with you know our current logo for the Women's Club, and um, we are very proud of the design that we had a volunteer that put this together for us. And um, what I am featuring in today's conversation is the restoration that has spanned 2018 to the present year. And I go back to 2018 because of the planning process. This is an archive photo of the clubhouse and you can see just the beautiful character of the building that's been retained all these many years. The streetscape looks a little different. It's a little bit lower profile because the building has been raised since this was taken many years ago, but you can see the features with the original windows, the original metal roof, and some of the uh, details around the front entrance. Notice the doors with the individual panes. Um, so a lot of details that we're trying to resurrect as part of this restoration. The Women's Club um, was organized in 1922. We'll soon celebrate 100 years as one of Hollywood's oldest civic organizations. So we'll, our restoration will be complete and we look forward to 2022 as a year of celebration. The founding members came to Hollywood with their entrepreneur husbands who were officers in various Joseph W. Young companies. The clubhouse itself was built in 1927 on two lots donated by Young. It was designed by architect Frederick Eskridge, and it's described in the master site file as an example of modest classical revival architecture. We were designated a Hollywood historical landmark in 1985 and listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1995. The screen shows four of the first presidents this photo was taken in 1927. And from left to right, you'll see Mrs. Boehmer, Mrs. Dickey, Mrs. Kington, and Mrs. Walters. Don't you love the outfits and the hats? These ladies and the early members had many uh, contributions that were diverse, and extremely impactful for the city of Hollywood. Their first project was 1923 Tag Day, which funded preschool medical inspections. They donated hundreds of books to create the very first public library in Hollywood. They enlisted subscribers for the first telephone service. Prior of service was only in Miami. And they raised over $12,000 for a World War II war bond drive. 
Today's club members continue to support the community through their work with the Boys and Girls Club, Broward Outreach, ChildNet, the Community Enhancement Collaboration, Henderson Behavioral Health, Susan G. Komen, local schools, and many other deserving charities. If you follow us in the Lakes newsletter, where our president, Marty Podesta, pens a, a great recap of the month's activities or the quarter's activities, or if you receive our monthly update, we've had an incredibly active pandemic year. Most recently, we've assembled well over 100 Easter baskets for the children um, in foster care with ChildNet. Our motto of living the volunteer spirit is thriving. Our historical recognition in terms of our restoration on the right hand side of the screen uh, goes back to the work that we did in 2013 with what we identify as phase two restoration. Broward County Historical Commission recognized us with the Dr. Cooper C. Kirk Award and we were cited for dedication and effort in the restoration and preservation of our historic building. The City of Hollywood gave us the Preservation Design Award in 2014, and Hollywood Lake Civic Association um, gave us the Good Neighbor Award. And lastly, and very importantly, the Hollywood Historical Society awarded us in 2015, citing an appreciation of the efforts to restore the Hollywood Women's Club. To give you a little bit of background of what we've experienced prior to the current um, restoration efforts, um, if those of you familiar with the building had been in Hollywood, you would have remembered the building being lifted in 2013. It was lifted 12 feet, heavily spalled concrete foundation removed, 37 helical piles installed, and the foundation built 18 inches higher, as you can see here, for FEMA compliance. Uh, this was referred to as phase two restoration. We worked with Joseph Kaler Architect and um, we continue that relationship with Joseph to, um, with the current restoration. He and his team have been an invaluable source of information, ideas, um, budgeting, uh, just have been our, our guiding star. So we have um, many thanks to Joe and his team. Beginning conditions, I'm just going to point out some of the um, issues with the building that, and I didn't mean to do that. Let's go back. All right, the building, this is a condition the building was in before we actually started this restoration phase. This photo was taken um, in 2014 after we completed phase two. You can see the original windows, the awning windows, the original shutters, which were a very thin wood configuration um, that did were not operable, were not closed. So we had no hurricane protection. Um, the portico, you can see the condition above the roof level. Um, this in doing repairs currently, a lot of the siding had to be replaced with new cypress siding. Um, there was quite a bit of remedial work with because of water damage below the windows because they leaked. And there was some structural reinforcement that was necessary because of some work that had been done back in the early 2000s that we identified as phase one, when the front building was threatened with, um, uh, actually the building was threatened with that front wall was leaning after hurricane damage. The um, up at the top here, you can see, um, So I keep doing this. Uh, 
you can see a vent that has been removed and a decorative round vent will be replaced to replicate the original venting on the building. Uh, all of this wood repair that I referenced is being repaired. And then we come inside the air conditioning venting has been removed. This big box vent return air has been removed. And the, we are putting in a new AC system. There will be dual venting on both sides to accommodate the dual system. The floors were restored, the red and white oak flooring. They are in good condition. We had to take up the flooring when we are addressed the bathrooms, but that will be put back down. And then you can see how we've had to accommodate chairs um, for our meetings and uh, our uh, rentals. But the interior um, changes will be reflected in the window replacement. We will eliminate the drapery treatment and this will be plantation shutters. And then we will be addressing a storage solution on the front wall. The kitchen and restrooms were the real issues for us in terms of accommodating accessibility and functionality. The kitchen, 1970s vintage uh, restoration or uh, remodel, I should say, with laminate ca cabinets and countertops, limited storage. In the last couple of years, cabinet doors falling off their hinges and a real problem for us as we try to accommodate our needs as an organization and also support our rental needs. All of this is being replaced. The bathrooms, as you can see, were little vintage cubbies, anything but ADA compliant. The scope of work was defined in tandem with, Joe, with um, Kaler Architects. And one of the big issues was providing accessibility to the building for those who had uh, impairments who were either in a wheelchair or use a walker. Um, we've had to turn people away in the past because there was no access. Well, now we gain a parking area that will have six parking spaces. This front space where my pointer shows will be the ADA parking space. The entire um, uh, parking area is going to be permeable concrete which is a very innovative solution for us and involved a great deal of research and planning to accommodate the drainage needs of the site. We'll have the rear portico that accesses the rear of the building and this will house the lift mechanism. Brick walkways that access to the back entry for the catering kitchen and all the way to the front sidewalk of the building. And these will be interspersed with our commemorative pavers. The restrooms will be accessible. Our catering kitchen will be completely remodeled. There will be electrical and lighting upgrades throughout. One of our deficiencies were uh, that if you plugged in too many appliances, the circuit breakers would always pop. So we were always looking for outlets and then also unplugging things so not to have issues with lighting. A uh, new AC system will be a dual system. The air handlers will be up in the attic space. A new roof, a standing seam roof. Um, new windows. And lastly, landscaping that introduced um, shrubbery, trees, um, and most importantly, addresses Broward County and the city's need, uh, requirements for drainage, on-site water containment. The elevations of the building show that what we're introducing in the rear portico, the lift, the stair from the parking area, it's all very clean and unobtrusive. The side profile, north and south elevations, again, you can see the relationship with the structure of the building. And this is where Kaler did such a beautiful job incorporating a new addition to make sure it was historically compliant. It has the metal roofing that we've now introduced with the replacement standing seam metal roofing. 
It has details in the column supports that emulate the trim elements on the building itself. And it's just a very clean architectural solution. The lift assembly will be an outdoor version of what you see photographed here that will provide wheelchair accessibility to an upper decking area that then enters the house. And this is a little bit more in detail of the portico and how the lift assembly is housed and protected from the weather. The roofing was something that we did not set out to incorporate into this scope of work initially. Um, it was became a necessary element because of the condition of the, <coughs> of the current roofing. It has now been replaced with a beautiful standing seam roof, Gavaloom, which uh, according to um, ratings has like a 60 year plus longevity. So this is going to be a long-term solution, but it posed significant challenges. You can see the exposed support elements. We found a lot of termite and water damage as the layers were peeled back. Additional blocking was incorporated to stabilize some of these elements. The roof itself, had severe deflection, which had to be corrected. So we'd have a crisp upper solution for them once the metal was supplied. And also hurricane strapping was introduced to tie the roofing all the way down to the foundation. In the interior, you can see quite a few of the exposed planking. The underside um, had to be replaced again because of water damage. And that's all been done. And all of this will be painted a bright white to just brighten up the interior. The windows were a critical component to securing our building. There's never been any kind of hurricane protection. You can see the original awning windows. They must have been introduced, we're guessing, sometime in the 60s. And I'm assuming there were you know, damage with the original windows. And this was a, a way that the membership or the women's club at the time determined this would be a good solution for the building. We wanted to get back to the historically accurate multi-paned, muntined configuration, double hung, with the weight mechanisms on the inside. So they have a beautiful operating mechanism. These were approved by the city of Hollywood and the Historic Preservation Board um, because we were incorporating shutters that could be introduced to for hurricane and wind event protection. These are cypress, these have been custom fabricated and will provide closure from the interior of the building once when the building needs to be secured. We did find that um, the reason we went to a custom solution and not a hurricane approved solution um, is that there was no um, factory version that would fit the framing of the existing building. And also we were able to realize a savings of over $25,000 for our window budget. The floor plan illustrates that just in a little bit more scale to understand access from the parking, the lift assembly that brings you up to a decking that will be in a Trex composite material for maintenance. And then you have access into the rear of the house with a ADA compliant restroom with the wheelchair radius and a secondary restroom for code compliance. And we gain a small closet. This provides access into the main assembly room. And then we have our kitchen where we're maximizing cabinetry with the height of the room and also gaining a lot of counter space. Um, the elevations shown just illustrate that we are truly capitalizing on the height of the catering kitchen space. 
We're doing cabinetry all the way up to the ceiling. We are framing our beautiful new windows and these will be shaker cabinets painted white. We'll have a subway tile backsplash, a ceramic white farm sink, quartz marble patterned countertops and porcelain tile flooring. All the materials selected for budget, functionality and safety um, to make sure that we have a functional room for our use and also for rentals. Um, our construction team, the gentleman here in the center is Charles Jordan, New World Builders. Um, Charles has been with us since the beginning. He was the, our lead GC for the phase two restoration when the building was lifted. He has an extensive historic preservation background, was, uh, I believe, a president, but I know very active with the Fort Lauderdale Historic Preservation Board. And his right-hand man is Ted Arpin, Arpin and Sons. Ted is truly a, a historic preservationist. He loves an old building and he loves our old clubhouse. So he is supported with Bobby Brown on the right-hand side. And these have been the team with other subcontractors supporting the work. The photos show the work that was done late last year when everything was demoed. We had a early start permit before we got our master permitting. And we were able to take everything down to the studs and the lath. And in doing so, found we had some structural issues with the um, decking of the attic space above and some deflection in the exterior wall that need to be reinforced. So there was framing that was introduced. And you can see here at the top, the entire ceiling was reframed to support a usable attic space and additional elements introduced to provide structural integrity. Everything that's being done is done to ensure stability and that we don't have issues going forward. Just this past week, the drywall was finished in the back areas, and these are very recent photos. You can see how our windows look from the interior. The drywall has been textured to duplicate the um, plaster detail or the plaster texture. And we're beginning to experiment with paint colors. So it's, it's beginning to look like a, uh, a space that's work usable and workable. This was an exciting addition when we were able to open up the attic space before there was a little cubby that you had to get on a huge ladder to climb up to. This area was not floored and it did house our AC air handler, but it was not practical for usage for storage. Now it has been completely reinforced, floored, hurricane strapping, additional strapping introduced for framing. And this area will be air conditioned. Our air conditioning, air handlers will be placed, are placed in this area. And what we're excited about is we gain a retractable ladder for access and a, an electric lift mechanism that we can send boxes and cartons and things up that would be a bit risky taking up a ladder. So we've gained a lot of storage. We have flamingos blocks, we have decorative elements that we use for our fundraising events. So we have a lot of things that now are currently residing in assorted people's garages and homes. The assembly room I referenced earlier that we were adding a excuse me, adding built-in storage cabinetry that frames the front entrance. And you can see the beautiful framing. It will have doors with paneling that will emulate some of the wainscoting details in the assembly room. And this will provide a space for us to roll in our chair carts 
and place all of our folding tables and accommodate storage that we've never been able to safely tuck away before. The chandeliers are original and we hope to be able to refurbish these. This is where we are looking to our friends and members to help with some additional funding because this was not budgeted. Um, we're estimating about $300 per. There are six of these units. They do need to be rewired. They need to be repainted and relamped to be functional and to retain some of the character. The shutters um, were taken off the building and have been completely replaced with new um, Cypress units. A thicker version of these, some have been tossed because the um, insert panels were plywood and just didn't hold up to the moisture conditions. But we've salvaged quite a few. And um, our friend Clive made a suggestion of why don't you sell them, sell a piece of history. So we've taken advantage of that recently. Um, our friends Steve and Tina Toth purchased four for a project they're working on for, at their home. And we have a few more. So I'm certainly available to meet someone at the clubhouse to pick through what's remaining and make us an offer. And lastly, the commemorative brick campaign. These are the bricks that we currently sold, like 115 of these. We are still marketing this as a fundraising initiative. These will be incorporated into our walkways. And um, we are we have complete ordering information on our website. So if you go to www.hollywoodwomensclub.org, um, you can place an order. And if you have any questions, you can contact me. So as I wrap things up, I will give you contact information for our current president, Marty Podesta. And for myself, if you want to do a screenshot, please feel free to contact either one of us. Um, this has certainly been a wonderful opportunity to share information this afternoon. And um, I'll open the floor to questions. Isabel? Yes, Gail? Hi. Um, I, unfortunately, I tried coming on and, and it said that it wasn't available yet. So I don't know if you, uh, if you had done this or not, or told us, but who is, is it the women's club that is paying for all the restoration or are there other uh, organizations that are helping? The um, restoration fund is supported by uh, fundraising that we've been gathering since the completion of the last uh, in, uh, restoration project. And we have been fortunate enough to have an anonymous benefactor who has been tremendously uh, great, uh, generous in funding a, a good percentage of this work. We are in the position currently because of the remedial work that we have encountered in the last um, six months with the termite and water damage, none of which was identified in initial budgeting, that we are still soliciting um, funding donations. Okay. And also, what type of functions are held there? That, that you rent out the space for? We rent for weddings, for showers, for family gatherings, birthday parties or reunions, for business meetings, um, a variety of functions. I mean, there've been some beautiful, beautiful interior uh, decors with over the years with some of these events. It was very interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Clara? No? Joan? Joan, you mute.
Okay. When will you be finished? <laughs> <laughs> That's the uh, $20 question. Um, we hope by August. Um, really? the, date, the date keeps moving out, but um, we've not gotten into any of the exterior uh, work with the parking area yet, so we don't know what we're going to encounter with that and weather could impact that significantly. Yeah. But the work is progressing on target for the interior, so we're trying to get the interior done and then focus on the exterior work. Congratulations. Thank you. Good work. Anyone else? I have a question, if I may. Can you hear me? Karen, yes. Uh, when can we plan our tea party? We had <laughs> such a fabulous time several oh, years that, ago. That would we, be fun to, deck, to uh, wear our 1920s outfits and have a tea party. We definitely have to we do did. that again. That would be a nice opening gesture. We're, we're, uh, we're open to that for sure. Okay, great. Thank you. Well, I... If I may, Bye. yeah, I just want to thank you, Izzy, for your um, extremely uh, competent and loving oversight of this uh, project for us. And also, Karen, we're going to, of course, uh, in 2022, it's going to be our 100th anniversary. So we're going to be planning a, a series of big soirees to get uh, people back into the clubhouse and um, garner a little recognition for all things historic. And we'd love to partner again with a, a historical society for a few of these things. A tea would be lovely. And just um, make people aware that uh, your historic uh, um, location and our historic clubhouse are part of Hollywood, at Absolutely. the very heart and soul of Hollywood. And we really need to get that word out. So we're very much looking forward to uh, 2022 uh, on a number of levels, but also because we'll be back open and back in the public eye. And we thank you for this opportunity to get the word out because as uh, Izzy says, we ran into a number of things that were um, unexpected and uh, as with everything, extremely expensive. But when we, when we come out on the other end of this, we are going to have a fabulous uh, clubhouse that is open for everyone and um, we're, we're so looking forward to that day. Thank you. So we would be very, very happy to join in with you in any event. Thank Super. you. Super. Okay. Great. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really enjoyed the presentation. It was very well done. Thank you. You're welcome. That's Izzy's attention to detail on everything. <laughs> We're so grateful. Well, it was my pleasure to share the, this afternoon with everyone. Thank you for participating. Super. Well. Uh, we want to thank you as well, Izzy. You're, you did a wonderful job. We love your clubhouse. I can tell now we're going to love it even more. I wish we had the storage that y'all are getting. That's that is phenomenal. Yes, isn't it great? Yeah. Yeah. And um, if we don't have any other questions, uh, Hannah, are you still there? I am. Okay. Here. I just wanted to say that our next lecture will be Dr. Joan Michelson who will show you our research center and how we do our research on any questions that we have from anyone. And you'll get to see how we work, where we work. It's quite interesting. We're in the process of moving some things into the garage of the Hammerstein house, but she will give you a tour of our research center and tell you just exactly how we find everything, hopefully, but not always. <laughs> and this program, this as as uh, Hannah said, this will be on Hollywood Historical Society's YouTube page probably tomorrow. And uh, I guess Hannah, you have it on yours as well. Correct. You can find it at SterlingFriends.org. Uh,
Well, I personally thank everyone for coming. And unfortunately, I don't see any more questions. So do we want to wrap it up, Hannah? We do. We want to thank everyone for coming. We look forward to seeing you next month. We hope you'll come to some of the library programs. Just check them out on our website. And again, um, I learned so much today, Isabel. Thank you so much. Wow. Oh, I didn't you. even know what, you know, the effort that you've put into this. And I can't wait to have a library meeting at the clubhouse. That would be, be good. Wonderful. So thank you good. so much. Thank have you. Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, a happy holiday for everyone enjoying the holidays in the next few weeks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.